Welcome, and thank you for joining me. Today we are looking at the Hierophant card. This is the second card associated with an astrological sign of alchemy. This is associated with conciliation and the sign of Taurus. I will leave the alchemical connections in the description box below. This is the first of the tarot cards that depicts more than one being. Until this point, there has only been one person in the tarot cards. As the major arcana represents stages and steps of personal development, as a soul and as a seeker, this is a major change. Now, as usual, let's start off with the modern tarot interpretations. Upon looking at our three modern sources, I found several meanings. First, in both the Light Seer's Tarot and the Good Tarot, only one being is depicted. In the Light Seer's Tarot, we find someone who looks like a guru, laughing, who's sitting in a lotus position. There's a stairway behind him, leading up to the center of a mandala. The words Chris Anne's associates with this card includes tradition, a lesson, spiritual teacher, Enlightenment. You can kind of get the picture from those. The phrase she lists with the card is, I am my own guru, and the guidance I need is rooted in my faith, my belief, and my unique essence. Page 29. Now for the good tarot, we see a figure with wings that is more reminiscent to the tradi traditional magician card. A woman stands before an altar, lifting a moon and star-like object towards heaven. Before her are four tools associated with the four elements. In Colette Barrett Reed's book, we find the words she associates with this card as spiritual practice. <clears throat> she also notes amidst her description that an exchange of vows is highlighted. Now this is interesting because in the little knockoff A.E. Wape deck, the first thing mentioned is marriage vows, followed by alliance along with servitude and a few others. Now after studying the esoteric meaning of these cards for personal development, none of these really click with me. If I had to summarize these meanings into one cohesive whole, this card implies our relationship to spirit. I say spirit instead of creator, or higher self, because that is implied more in this card than anything else. I've shared elsewhere, and I'll probably repeat this in videos because it's so important, but one of the big goals and secrets of the path is a reorientation towards the creator. This card does not depict the creator. Lauderhand describes the Hierophant this way. It is the connection between the outside and then the innermost on everything. It goes from the bottom all the way to the top. Guidance is a reality for anybody who wants it. We need guidance, and consequently we have something that answers that need. The Hierophant is the revealer of the mysteries of life. These mysteries can be revealed to any of us, provided we're willing to accept the ideal of revelation. This might be a stumbling block for my, some, but for myself I accept the idea. Page 84 now, A. E. Waite spends most of his chapter on the Hierophant saying what is, it is not, and commenting that many misinterpreted this card during his time. But he does say that it represents all things righteous and sacred on the manifest side. He is order and the head of the recognized hierarchy, which is a reflection of another and greater order. Page 44. Let's start off with the name Hierophant. According to, to Paul Foster Case, Hierophant means revealer of sacred things, and there were people who held this title. Case disagrees with A. Way, explaining that the Hierophant is the bridge maker who provides a connecting link between outer experience and interior illumination. Page 78. The gray throne and pillars represent wisdom, because gray is the tint of two complementary colors when mixed together. Gray, according to Case, is a perfect balance of all pairs of opposites. This gray color associates it with Chokma, or wisdom, the first Sephiroth on the masculine side of the tree of life. The pillars are phallic symbols, but repeat the idea of duality, similar to the High Priestess card. The two horned circles behind the Hierophant's head represents Taurus. Case points out that Waite's version also has a sign of Taurus behind the Hierophant's head, but the glyph is less obvious. The crown has three layers like the Pope. We know that this invokes the Trinity. There are 15 trifoils, which is the value of the name of God in Hebrew. The trifoil represents three, and when multiplied by 15 represents the name of Adam in Hebrew. Three trifoils on top, Case explains, are for the threefold nature of the life power, that is salt, sulfur, and mercury in alchemy, or body, spirit, and soul. The five in the second row represents the five senses. The seven on the bottom represents the seven spirits of God to the seven chakras seven alchemical steps, and seven planets, all of which correspond with one another. The tiara has a small sphere in Case's version of the tarot card representing the archetypal world. The outer robe of the Hierophant is orange-red, the color associated with Taurus. 
The border is blue-green for Scorpio, the sign opposite Taurus. The clasp of the robe is the silver crescent symbolizing the moon that is exalted in Taurus. And the clasp is at the throat as a reminder that Taurus rules the deck. The white undergarment is like the fool and symbolizes the light of perfect wisdom. There are ten crosses, including the keys, in this card, and they represent the union of the positive and negative forces. They represent the ten sephiroth on the Kabbalah tree of life. One key is silver and represents the subconscious and moon. The other is gold, representing consciousness and the sun. From the crown hangs an ornament that looks like a yoke. This represents union of body and mind. The hierophant holds a golden staff that symbolizes dominion of the life power. This is an ancient symbol from Egypt. The three crossbars represent the triplicate, or the three natures, sulfur, salt, and mercury. Gold is the color of the universal energy. And the square of the dais upon which the throne sits represents the number four. Case explains this, four is the number of order and measurement, as if to suggest that however far beyond our present experience the higher consciousness may go, it rests on a solid basis of fact and reason. Like the Hierophant's robe, the dais is covered in red orange corresponding, corresponding to Taurus. There are four circles enclosing crosses upon it, which is the Venus symbol, folded upon itself, representing the manifestations of the four worlds. The black and white checkerboard pattern represents the alternation of darkness and light. The two supplicants wear robes with flowers from the magician's garden. The roses represent the conscious desire mind. There are five roses representing the five senses. The lilies represent the subconscious. The flowers are mixed with yellow symbols that represent the yoke, again representing union of body and mind. Well, that was a lot. And this is a lot of deep symbolism in this key. Ultimately, the Hierophant represents, according to Paul Foster Case and his student Jason Lauderhand, the Higher Self. The new interpretations of this card is intriguing, but I think the Higher Self is the only description that you really need. A spiritual practice or guru connects us to that higher power. So in a way, they are right, but it's so much easier to keep it simple. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.